Welcome to the World Brief. The content of the briefing includes Nepal's first same-sex married couple vows to continue fight for gay rights. COP28 vow to triple renewable energy by 2030 supported by 118 nations. Powerful earthquake strikes eastern Philippines, prompting tsunami alerts. Philippines, France agree to start defense pact negotiations. USWNT vs China Friendly Saturday, Everything You Need to Know. Nepal's first same-sex married couple vows to continue fight for gay rights. South China Morning Post. Nepal has become the second country in Asia to recognize same-sex marriage. The first gay couple to have their same-sex marriage officially recognized in the country have vowed to campaign for changes in the law to help others like them to get married. Surendra Pandey, a man, and Maya Gurung, a transgender woman, were able to legally register their marriage at a village council office earlier this week. Nepal is one of the first countries in Asia to recognize same-sex unions. The constitution adopted in 2015 also explicitly states there can be no discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation. COP28 vow to triple renewable energy by 2030 supported by 118 nations. Nikkei Asia. A joint proposal by the US, Europe, and the UAE to triple renewable energy capacity to at least 11,000 gigawatts by 2030 has won support from 118 countries at the 28th Union Climate Change Conference of the Parties. Japan has added its support and emerging and developing countries in Asia and Africa are being called on to participate as well. The aim is to state the goal in the final agreement of the summit, in which about 200 nations will participate. Powerful earthquake strikes eastern Philippines, prompting tsunami alerts. New York Times. A 7.6 magnitude earthquake struck the eastern parts of the Philippines on Saturday, triggering tsunami advisories across the region and as far as the southern part of Japan, nearly 2,000 miles away. There were no immediate reports of damage. The quake struck at about 10.37 p.m. local time in Mindanao, in the eastern part of the Philippines, according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The Japan Meteorological Agency issued a tsunami advisory for the Pacific coast of Japan, from the Mayakajima Yayama region to Chiba Prefecture. Residents of the provinces Suriago, Del Sur and Davao Oriental on the eastern part of Mindanao were warned to head to higher ground or move farther inland because of the possibility of tsunami waves of more than 1 meter, or a little more than 3 feet, according to the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology. Philippines, France agree to start defense pact negotiations. Bloomberg. The Philippines and France are in talks to establish a defense agreement that would allow troop visits. This comes as the Philippines seeks to strengthen military ties amid tensions in the South China Sea. The agreement, if reached, would enhance defense and military activities between the two countries. The Philippines is also in discussions with Japan for a similar deal. USWNT vs China Friendly Saturday, Everything You Need to Know. Yahoo! The U.S. women's national team will take on China in a friendly match on Saturday, marking the team's first game since their early exit from the 2023 World Cup. The match will be broadcast on several networks, including TNT and Telemundo. The team has already begun rebuilding, with new coach Emma Hayes set to take over next May. In the meantime, interim coach Twyla Kilgore will lead the day-to-day -day operations. The team will also play China on Tuesday in a second exhibition match. Impact of Amazon's climate-driven drought may last until 2026. South China Morning Post. The Amazon rainforest is experiencing a severe drought, with rivers reaching their lowest levels in 50 years. The drought, which began in April, has been caused by climate change and has disrupted access to food and medicine in many cities across the region. The drought is also expected to have a significant impact on next year's soybean crop, with initial forecasts being revised downwards by up to 10 million metric tons. The drought could also have a serious impact on the climate, as it could double the mortality rate of the rainforest's largest trees, which store large amounts of carbon. Temperatures in the tropical North Atlantic Ocean and off the coast of South America have reached all-time highs, causing the rains to be drawn towards North America and away from the Amazon. Scientists predict that the drought could last until the next rainy season in late 2024, and that the Amazon may not make a full recovery until early 2026 at best. Macron concerns derail EU-South America trade deal yet again. Bloomberg. French President Emmanuel Macron has said that the environmental concessions made in the proposed EU-Mercosur trade deal fall short of what is needed. Macron's objections are significant as the deal could be concluded as a mixed agreement, requiring approval from the 27 national parliaments and some regional ones, allowing France to veto it. The EU-Mercosur deal would create an integrated market of 780 million consumers and is one of the largest free trade pacts in history. 
Brazil has also informed the EU that it is not ready to sign the agreement, due to Argentina's reluctance. Hong Kong's Cathay Pacific becomes top corporate sponsor of West Kowloon Arts Hub. South China Morning Post. Cathay Pacific Airways has become the largest corporate sponsor of Hong Kong's West Kowloon Cultural District in a three-year collaboration. The partnership will see Cathay Pacific transport artworks from mainland China and around the world to Hong Kong for exhibitions. The airline will also support the travel of local artists abroad and promote the activities of the arts hub to attract tourists. Cathay Pacific CEO Ronald Lam Shupor said the airline was already responsible for delivering many of the works on display at the Hong Kong Palace Museum and M+. The sponsorship will help with the hub's overall revenue, which includes corporate backing in addition to ticket sales. National security studies are going mainstream. Will it breed a new Chinese elite? South China Morning Post. China is expanding its focus on national security by establishing national security studies departments in universities across the country. This move reflects China's long-term strategy to improve knowledge and talent in the national security field amid increasing geopolitical tensions with the US-led West. The goal is to develop a new class of security personnel and create an apparatus to support them, which will fundamentally refocus the mindset and approach to governance by Chinese officials. The education sector is being used to extend the overall influence of the security drive and raise national security awareness among the general public. However, some experts argue that the establishment of the new discipline reflects the insecurity of the Communist Party and its perceived external threats rather than an actual danger to China's national security. The national security studies departments at Chinese universities cover various aspects of security, including political, territorial, military, economic, cultural, cybersecurity, and financial security. Each department is designed to leverage the traditional strengths of the university and focus on security matters relevant to its region. However, there are concerns that the broad concept of comprehensive national security could result in a securitized view of China's relationship with the world and hinder its domestic development and international cooperation. China's push for national security education reflects its desire to ensure its survival amid elevated geopolitical tensions. By establishing national security studies departments in universities, China aims to develop a new class of security personnel and create an apparatus to support them. However, there are concerns about the potential implications of this shift, including a securitized view of China's relationship with the world and a focus on self-reliance that could hinder its domestic development and international cooperation. Police in Greece arrest father, son and confiscate tons of sunflower oil passed off as olive oil. Associated Press a father and son have been arrested in Greece for selling sunflower oil that they claimed was olive oil. Police raided a warehouse near Thessaloniki and found 13 tons of the adulterated oil, with just over half already packaged in tin cans and plastic bottles. The remainder was stored in a tank. The pair, aged 80 and 36, bought the sunflower oil in Bulgaria and added coloring to make it look like extra virgin olive oil. They sold some in Bulgaria and the rest in Greece. The duo have been released pending further investigation. Israel bombards southern Gaza as residents fear new ground offensive. South China Morning Post. Israeli warplanes and artillery launched a series of attacks on the south of the Gaza Strip after the collapse of a truce in the nearly two-month-old war between Israel and Hamas militants. The attacks hit mosques, homes and were close to a hospital, leading to fears that Israel is preparing for a ground operation in the south of the Palestinian territory. The Gaza Health Ministry said at least 193 Palestinians had been killed and 650 wounded since the truce ended on Friday morning. Israel has vowed to wipe out Hamas, saying that the group poses a threat to its very existence. The renewed fighting has caused intense destruction and has taken place on top of the already massive destruction caused by the war. Conditions inside Gaza are reaching breaking point, according to the head of the International Red Cross. The first aid trucks since the end of the truce entered Gaza on Saturday, entering through the Egyptian side of the Rafah crossing. The warring sides are blaming each other for the collapse of the truce. Supply chains headline China-Vietnam talks as U.S. vies for influence. South China Morning Post. Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi visited Vietnam to strengthen supply chains as competition with the U.S. for influence in the country intensifies. Wang called for increased high-level exchanges and improved security, economic, and maritime ties between China and Vietnam. The visit is expected to pave the way for Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to Vietnam later this month, following U.S. President Joe Biden's visit in September. Despite strong trade ties, China and Vietnam are in dispute over parts of the South China Sea, 
but officials from both sides agreed to increase Chinese investment in areas in Vietnam that used advanced technology and were environmentally friendly. Philippines says China executed two Filipinos convicted of drug trafficking. South China Morning Post. China has executed two Filipinos who were convicted of drug trafficking, despite appeals from the Philippine government to commute their death sentences to life imprisonment. The two individuals were arrested in 2013 and convicted in 2016, after which the Philippine government provided funding for their legal defense. The government also appealed to Chinese authorities to commute their sentences, but China upheld the conviction. The executions come at a difficult time in the relations between China and the Philippines, due to escalating territorial disputes in the South China Sea. COP28, U.S. touts climate leadership as oil and gas output hits record. Reuters. U.S. Vice President Kamala Harris addressed the COP28 summit in Dubai, claiming that the U.S. has turned climate ambition into action. She listed over $400 billion in subsidies provided by the Inflation Reduction Act, announced a $3 billion pledge to the Green Climate Fund, and unveiled new measures to curb methane emissions from oil and gas operations. The U.S. is the world's second-largest emitter of greenhouse gases and the largest producer of oil and gas, and the role of fossil fuels in the global response to climate change is a contentious issue at the summit. In Mexico, a Japanese traditional dancer shows how body movement speaks beyond culture and religion. Associated Press. Japanese traditional dancer Naoko Kihara has been practicing Hanayaji-style dance for almost 24 years. Unlike the fast movements of samba or salsa, Hanayaji dancers move quietly and gently, performing a few controlled moves. Some of the repertoire is almost sacred, as the dances were historically performed to honor the emperor. Kihara said, We move our bodies close to the earth because we are part of nature. It is a respect for the earth. It is a story about anger, courage. It symbolizes the suffering of humanity. Hey there, folks. It's your friendly neighborhood Dr. Six here with your weekly dose of news from the six dimensions. Let's jump right in, shall we? First up, we have some heartwarming news from Nepal, where the first same-sex married couple has vowed to continue fighting for gay rights. Surendra Pandey and Maya Gurung are trailblazers in their country and have set an example for others to follow. It's fantastic to see progress being made in the fight for equality. In environmental news, the 28th Union Climate Change Conference of the Parties has seen support from 118 nations for a proposal to triple renewable energy capacity by 2030. This is a significant step towards combating climate change and reducing our reliance on fossil fuels. Kudos to those countries for taking the lead. On a more serious note, a powerful earthquake has struck the eastern parts of the Philippines, triggering tsunami alerts. Our thoughts are with those affected, and we hope for their safety and well-being. In international relations, the Philippines and France are in talks to start negotiations for a defense pact, while the U.S. women's national team gears up for a friendly match against China. It's always interesting to see how sports can bring people together, even in the midst of political tensions. Moving on to the Amazon rainforest, it's disheartening to hear about the severe drought it's currently facing. The impact on the ecosystem and the climate is significant, and it's a stark reminder of the urgent need to address climate change and protect our planet. In European news, French President Emmanuel Macron has derailed the EU-South America trade deal due to environmental concerns. It's crucial to prioritize sustainability and ensure that trade agreements align with our goals for a greener future. Shifting our focus to Hong Kong, Cathay Pacific Airways has become the top corporate sponsor of the West Kowloon Cultural District. It's great to see a collaboration that supports the arts and promotes cultural exchange. In China, national security studies departments are being established in universities across the country. While it's important to ensure national security, there are concerns about the potential implications of this shift. It's a delicate balance to strike. On a lighter note, a father and son in Greece have been arrested for selling sunflower oil as olive oil. Talk about a cooking catastrophe. Let's hope they learn their lesson and stick to the real deal next time. In the Middle East, Israel has bombarded southern Gaza, leading to fears of a new ground offensive. The situation is tense, and we hope for a peaceful resolution and an end to the violence. Supply chains and influence are at the forefront of China-Vietnam talks, as the competition between China and the US heats up. It's a reminder that economics and geopolitics are closely intertwined. Lastly, China has executed two Filipinos convicted of drug trafficking, despite appeals from the Philippine government. This is a tragic reminder of the severity of drug-related crimes and the differing approaches to justice in different countries. And there you have it, folks. Another week of news wrapped up in a neat little package. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions. 
What do you make of these stories? Are there any topics you'd like to dive deeper into? Let's keep the conversation going. Until next time, stay curious and stay six-dimensional. Dr. Six out. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the Six Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of Six Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the Six Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize Six Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, sixdobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive Six Do Brief via email.